when Varroa came into New Zealand, we were asked to do an education work program for beekeepers. And that's why we did these two day workshops all the way through New Zealand. And what we tried to do is to teach people how to run integrated control programs. And what that is, instead of just relying on a chemical, you use a whole lot of methods that each one of them gives you some control. And by the time you add them all together, you get good control. And it might be things like ventilated floorboards or drone trapping or breeding for resistance. You can also put chemical control in there, but it's also only treating when your row levels are high, high enough and they need treating. So integrated control uses a whole variety of, of these methods to control, to control it. In hindsight, we probably wasted our time, I think, um, because I think if we could have just sent everybody an email and said, put these chemical strips in the spring, these in the autumn, Vro goes away. And, and they're right, and that's what everybody did, even though we did try to explain these IPM programs. But as we're developing resistance to these mitocytes, beekeepers are going to have to come back to some of these principles, starting to use a much more alternative, a much more variety of treatments that add together to give you good control. And for an Australian audience, it actually makes more sense that in New Zealand to go straight to an IPM program, especially when you've got a wide honey flow, long honey flow, where you can't just chuck a chemical in because of resistance and residue issues. So you can start putting a package together that without being invasive will give you some level of control all the way through that honey flow. And then you might have to tidy things up at the end of the honey flow for overwintering. For instance, why the colonies are on a honey flow, they could have a ventilated floorboard. Um, you could do some drone trapping every now and then, take some drone brood out and control it. You could be selecting for that uh, gene that gives you a little bit of resistance. And having a group like that and perhaps a single organic treatment in there somewhere and checking VRO levels to say, okay, yeah, I don't want to have to treat, but I do. Putting all those together as an integrated control pro program for the Australian audience for long honey flows, it's probably a better way of go, going about controlling VRO than saying in spring do this and do that in autumn because in Australia it just may not work as well.